All right, 1.8 is our section for tonight's work. Combinations of functions, composite functions is what we're looking at here for this section. All right, so arithmetic combination of functions. So just like we can add or subtract regular numbers, we can also add or subtract functions. So f of x plus g of x, something like that. All right, so one thing, and this is going to be important as we come through this, the domain of anything that we do here consists of all the real numbers that are the domains of both f and g. So it has to work for both of them. All right. You can also not have g of x equal to 0 when we're dividing, because remember, we can never divide by 0. Okay. All right, so here's our different function uh, combinations. So if we write it like this, what we're going to say is take whatever our f of x function is and add it to our g of x function. Okay, and that's true all the way down. If we multiply, we would multiply the two functions together. All right, so let's take a look at a couple examples here. So given f of x is 2x plus 1 and g of x is x squared plus 2x minus 1, let's add them. So we're going to say 2x plus 1. And I like to do it vertically because then we can keep our like terms lined up. x squared plus 2x minus 1. We add them up. We've got x squared. We've got 4x. Our 1's cancel out. So that is our answer. All right, and then evaluate the sum when x equals 3. So let's plug 3 in there. So this is f plus g of 3 is going to equal 3 squared plus 4 times 3. So we get 9 plus 12. So we get 21 would be our answer there. All right, so see if you can do that with exercise 9a. All right, so same thing here, with, except we're going to be subtracting. So f of x minus g of x, we've got 2x plus 1 minus x squared. I'm going to put this in parentheses so we don't lose our plus or minuses. And so we've got a negative x squared. 2x minus 2x cancels. And what happens when we minus a negative? We're going to actually add it. So we'll have negative x squared plus 2. And that is f minus g of x. So if we do f minus, sorry, f minus g of 2, like it asks us to do, we'll have negative 2 squared plus 2, and we'll get negative 4 plus 2, or negative 2. All right, so try part B of exercise 9. All right, exercise four. It looks like I have skipped exercise three in there somewhere, but exercise three was to do f times g of these as well, and you can do 9c as well. So I apologize about that, but make sure you try 9c. And then we're going to look at 9d here as well. So this is the division. So we've got f over g of x, and we want to do it the other way, g over f of x. We want to see it both ways. All right, so for the first one, f over g of x, we're going to have root x over root 4 minus x squared. All right, so we can't leave a square root in the denominator, so we'll times this by square root of 4 minus x squared, and by square root of 4 minus x squared, and end up here with the square root of 4x minus x cubed all over 4 minus x squared. All right, and so on this one, what we mean to make sure we do is tell it the domains here. So the domain is everything that's in common. So for the domain of f of x, x has got to be greater than or equal to 0. For this one, we would say 4 minus x squared is greater than or equal to 0. We'll minus the 4, negative x squared is going to be greater than or equal to negative 4, which means x squared is less than or equal to 4, which means that x is less than or equal to 2, or greater than or equal to negative 2. All right, and so we need to be in common with these, right? So the only numbers that are in common here that are bigger than 0 and less than negative 2 
would be from 0 to x to 2. That would be our domain. We also have to say that now our new denominator, 4 minus x squared, cannot equal 0. Right? So 4 cannot equal x squared. So now 2 plus or minus cannot equal x, which means that we cannot no we can no longer be equal to 2. So it's just going to be 0 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. Okay? So that's what we're looking at for the first option. All right. Let me erase this, and we'll flip it over. So now we're going to do g over f. So now we're going to have root 4 minus x squared all over root x. And this is g over f of x. So let's clean this up. And we're going to have the same thing on top. 4x minus x cubed, but now over x as our function. All right, so we know from the last one that the numbers in common are between 0 and 2. So that'll stay the same, but now our denominator changed. So here we just say x cannot equal 0. And so that was originally part of it, so we've got to get rid of it. So now we'll say 0 is less than x is less than or equal to 2. All right? If this part is a little tricky for you, we will go over it. For most people, the domain of the quotients is probably the hardest part of this section. All right? So we'll go over it. Uh, sorry, try part D, 9D when you're ready. All right, so composition of the functions. Another way of combining two functions is to form the composition. So that means we're going to do one and then do the next. All right, so the way we write that is f of g of x. Right? So in this situation here, we see that g of x is what's actually getting plugged into f. So in f, we have x squared. So we have something being squared. And the thing that's end up going to be squared here is whatever g was, the inner one. So we'll plug in the x plus 1 in here and then square it. All right? The other way to write it is f composed with g with a little dot there. All right? So we'll try some examples here. Let's do f of g, uh, I'm sorry, f composed with g of x. And so we're going to write something plus 2, because that's the one on the outside, the one that comes first. It's something plus 2. And what is that something? That something is 4 minus x squared. So that would go in here. And then we can clean it up. 4 plus 2 is 6, so we have 6 minus x squared. That would be a. For b, we're going to go the other way. We're going to say 4 minus something squared. And that something is x plus 2. So we're going to have 4 minus, I'm going to foil this out, x squared uh, plus 4x plus 4. So we'll clean this up. 4 minus 4 cancels, and we've got negative x squared minus 4x. Careful with your negatives. Don't forget to distribute them. All right, and so now we're going to do g composed with f of negative 2. Well, we already have the x version, so let's just plug in negative 2 wherever we see the x's. And we've got negative 4 plus 8, which is equal to 4. All right? See if you can do that for problem 37. All right, so let's talk about the domain of a composite function here. So we want to find the domain of g of f of g of x for the functions given by this. So remember, it's the things that are in common here. All right? So when we look at the domain of f of x, it's all real numbers, right? If we look at g of x, it's the square root of 9 minus x squared. 9 minus x squared must be greater than 0, right? So here we can move this over. x squared is less than 9. So now when we, I'm going to rewrite it like this. It's just a little easier to read. And so x must be less than or equal to 3, or greater than or equal to negative 3. So we need to be in between those two, and it's in common, right? So if this is everything, but this one says only these, then this is going to supersede that, and that's going to be our answer. Okay? All right, so see if you can try that on exercise 41.
All right, let's try to decompose this, right? The function given by h of x equals 1 over x minus 2 squared as the, comp as the composition of two functions. So this is a problem where you can have many, many different answers, right? It depends on how you set it up. What I see here is two things going on. We've got 1 divided by something, right? So I'll call it maybe q, right? And then we've got this thing down here, right? We've got x minus 2 squared. So right there, I've decomposed it into two separate parts. First, we're going to have 1 over something. And what is that something? It's x minus 2 squared. That's what we've plugged in, all right? So the composition, we would want to write f of g of x equals 1 over x minus 2 squared if f of x equals 1 over x, g of x is going to equal x minus 2 squared. And that's just one way of writing it. The other thing we could have done is made f of x 1 over x squared. And then g of x, the thing we plug in, would have just been x minus 2, because we would have plugged that whole thing in for the x. Okay, so a number of different ways to go on this one, but you're just trying to split it up into two separate functions. See if you can do that on problem 53. All right, so a word problem here. We've got a bacteria count given by the function n of t. And then the temperature function of the food in degrees Celsius, when it's removed from refrigeration, the temperature is given by T of T. Okay, little t is in hours. Find the composition N of T of little t and interpret its meaning in context. All right, so we'll start with that. So 20, and instead of T squared, we've got to plug in 4T plus 2 squared minus 80. We're going to plug in 4t plus 2 plus 500. All right. And so let's see what we've got here. We're going to have to FOIL first. 20, 16t squared plus 16t plus 4 minus 320t. Uh, sorry, distributing. Minus 160 plus 500. So 20 times 16 is 320. T squared. 20 times 16 is also 320. T plus 80 minus 320 T. So that's nice because that's going to cancel that out there. Minus 160 plus 500. Let's clean up here. 80 plus 500 is 580. Minus 160 is 480. 420. So 320 t squared, and what did we say, plus 420? All right, so on this one, we can factor out what? Let's see here. Pull out 10 for sure. Well, 32 and 42, so we can pull out 20. It'll be 16 and 21. Okay, and so we have decomposed that down as far as we can go. So now let's go ahead and plug in 2,000 there for T. Okay, so this is our decomposition for part A. For part B, let's plug it in. 20, 16, 2,000. Uh, I'm sorry, we're trying to find the time when it reaches. We're solving for T, so we're going to set this equal to 2,000. Okay? So we'll divide by 20. That works out nicely. Cross that off, and 2,000 divided by 20 is a 0. 200 over 2 is 100. So 100 equals 16t squared plus 21. Subtract 21, and we've got 79 equals 16t squared. And so we're going to have over 16, and so we'll have root 79 over 4 equal to t. I don't have a calculator on me. We can plug that into the calculator to get the exact value. 
All right. So that's what we're looking at for this example. Try a similar type problem on, exam on exercise 73. And that will do it. All right, questions asking class.